Yep, heard all of that. Morning. Good morning, class. It's Monday morning. There's snow on the ground. I've got that school vibe a little bit. Nothing like a Monday morning at school and there's snow on the ground and you just want to be home. Yeah, but then you're at situation school. Like, that's not even a good ever. vibe. Like, why is no, that a yeah. vibe? Like, it's, it's not like not you, you didn't say I got like the day off from school vibe. You're just like, yeah, it's like got that vibe where, you know, you're really pumped because the weekend's over and it's cold out, but yeah. not snowy enough to get home. from. No, that sounds terrible. It's the nostalgia of looking out the window and just wanting to not be at school. <laughs> you know, it's that I long for that. I long for the feeling of of FOMO before we knew what it was. What did we do with FOMO? Fear of missing out on a snow day. I had FOMO before it was called FOMO. So Mm -hmm. um, I had this thing where I never napped in college because I was afraid that something cool was going to happen and people were going to like do something fun when I was napping. So I literally never napped. I'm like, I guess I'm just tired. Hopefully I'll make it up on the next on the next sleep. And I rarely did. Thus the reason with my scholastic issues and attending class but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I hate, like that was, that was my curse in college is because I never wanted to miss anything fun. So I didn't. So then I did too many fun things and then I didn't class. <laughs> I didn't college I was, well. Like the, uh, miss out on the kids who were doing Aikido in the quad. <laughs> never tell you, I did Aikido for my gym class cause I wanted to be like Steven Seagal for a semester. Um, but all the other sure. kids really wanted to do Aikido. <laughs> And it was like, so they would do it. They were also, it was like my first exposure to anime. Like all the kids that were into like Japanese animation stuff and they all hung out. And then in the quad, they would do drills like Aikido drills as everybody else was walking to class. And I was like, God damn, I wish I ever had that amount of confidence in my life to just really love what I'm doing and just do it in front of everybody. But I won't. I'm not going to start here today. That's for sure. Is that confidence? Is know. that what confidence is? Is like the perfect definition of confidence is like, that's, that's the thing is, do they think, do they know the perception that they have amongst everyone? And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just yeah, yeah, wondering no. if, if those kids know the perception or if the, like, right. Cause I feel like it's only confidence if they're like, I love doing this. And I know people think ill of me for doing it in public. Like, not, again, not that it's right, but you are in a campus of 18 to 22 year olds. Like they are v- horrible, horrible people at that age starting to come out of it. But let's be honest, that's still like really judgy people. So it's a, it's only confidence if they know what it appears to be by the others. If I don't think it's confidence if they don't think that they're perceived weird. It's something else. Well, I can say from my own experience on this podcast, I love doing it, even though people think ill of me that I do it. That's in confidence. Yep. Yep. Congrats. You're, you're confident. I confuse my priorities. off to a hot start the sound is working let's keep this rolling yeah let's keep you know let's just keep this episode going <laughs> let's go another 30 or well. 40 why not why not might as well hey big question are we ready is this is this our first both of us ready wheel episode yeah i think <laughs> i think fully? i think not bad all the categories not bad. covered i'm gonna have some stuff <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's good or not, but I'm going to have some stuff and it will be some things. I mean, I can tell from the metrics. I'm doing a lot of data analysis for the pod this year, checking demographics. I'm mm. um, really exploring our markets and okay. the wheel has definitely had an impact 
up to one to two extra listeners. I don't know. That's not true. I don't look. <laughs> I've never looked at this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, though. One of these days, we're going to take this seriously. <clears throat> and that's what people want. Yeah. <laughs> Should we wheel it right away? <laughs> Five <Wow>. minutes in, <laughs> right away. <laughs> wheel it right away. I mean... Yeah, we'll just drag out our answers and really, you know, but at least there's some sort of semblance of guidance. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I got to say, really, really liking your, uh, especially from the live episode on, really liking your camera angles lately. I think you're really nailing, nailing your framing, you know. <laughs> I don't even know way. if you're being. I, I am. It's really good. I feel like there was a good. 25 to 30 episodes yeah. in the middle there okay. or it was mostly <laughs> just the ceiling in your head <laughs> good no um, no it's important that you didn't fucking share that with me 25 30 episodes ago so that's know, that's I stupid so, so you're you're growing <laughs> as an adult just sit there and judge me for half a year instead of simply saying hey, well, man, why don't you tilt your camera down i guess i didn't that's really cool because it's easy and when you edit it to just like crop it and make it look right. the same Right. But uh, so I didn't really notice until now I do. Now I can see. But you did now notice because you having, cropped it. I don't every want time. to go back. So that's noticing. If you <laughs> no, didn't notice, you wouldn't have cropped it. So that's that's also wrong. So keep lying. Keep keep throwing horrible, horrible lies. In. Let's spin the fucking wheel. All right. This is this is absurd. I won't stand here for this, even though I'm sitting. All right. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. And sharing the wheel here. Um, I always wonder how this works on an audio. Like it takes like four seconds to pull the wheel up. And that's like why you really want to see this long delay, the video version of this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the video adds um, a lot to it, folks. There is an actual virtual wheel being spun. It is not yeah. tangible. It's you virtually for that. a real wheel. Yeah. It is. The wheel exists. It is real. It's just virtual not tangible virtual insanity okay am i the asshole new this is new to us all right um first time first time i guess i had my own experience that i had already Uh written down and I wanted to check with you to see if I am the asshole. I mean, we can go in different ways. We can okay. look up, am I the assholes and decide. Um, but as nope. you said last time, it's hard. I mean, we can't really judge um, you in particular, right? You, you're not um, you're not fit to judge from an objective perspective. Is that, is that what you were saying? Well, it's what more of it? like, it's not a problem. Like, it's it's drama and so it's like well if you're asking me it sounds like both people in this situation are fucking useless so you're both assholes like i would just call everyone involved assholes which is good but yeah i don't know it's too whiny but no i'll judge the shit out of you um, some if you want me to <laughs> i don't know if it, i mean who knows we probably may have talked about this before but maybe not because this was definitely at the beginning of our tenure of not um having a relationship and that was Sophomore year, Mm -hmm. um, breaking up with my high school girlfriend who you knew, I mean, we all knew obviously, but Mm -hmm. the way I did it. So I think it was fine for me to do it for whatever. I mean, I would say there was a lot of reasons why we shouldn't have been together. I mean, not the least of which is like, whatever your high school relationship is, will never really survive unless you were born in 1960 or before. Um, I mean, it's rare. It's rare for any relationship, let alone a high school relationship. But I think I had some cause for the breakup. Um, That's obvious. But the way I did it, so it was Valentine's Day. 2020, 20, oh yeah, 2020, all right. What year did we go to school? 2002, maybe? It could have been. Somewhere around there. Um, That would have been our freshman year. And we were just, it was some kind of like, (laughs) happy valentine's day thing like you know a little one of those popping in like oh hey what's up hey oh good you, and it's up? on what's aim on? Hey. that's yeah, a yeah, great start is. valentine's it day is, yeah. on yep. aim happy valentine's day and then i was just like 
it was one of those classic ones too, where it's like, what's, what's wrong? What's going on with you that I got, you know, one of those, what's going on? Why are you, you know? And I was like, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> wait, wait, what's going on? Are you serious? I'm, I'm, we're not going to talk anymore. <laughs> like, well, you're doing this, you're doing this today on Valentine's day. I'm not yeah. thinking about the day. It's like, it's like, it just was like, it, so it was breakup over in some messenger on Valentine's day. I would say I had cause, but does, does it matter? Like if you're going to break up with somebody, is it an asshole move for me to do it on Valentine's day versus another day? And then I would say the instant messenger part of it's pretty assholeish, but mind you, it's probably like 19 years old. I don't know. Yeah, there wasn't going to be a cordial way of doing this well thought out. So let's I mean, people do let's it. Over take that out. Let's take, yeah, let's take that out of the equation because I don't think that's any relevance. Like the, the message, the I am thing. It's like, well, at 19. Yeah. Sorry. It wasn't an epic, you know, uh, thing with a lot of closure and heartfelt, you know, uh, well wishes and stuff. So taking that out of it. Like, I think there may have even been some like light, light cheating involved that I had already overcome. That wasn't a big deal per se, but like it's a dusting cheating. of cheating. <laughs> it's a dust. This is, you know, of course, and then it's, you know, it's a long distance thing. You know, I was paying for an AT&T landline so we could call on the regular. It's a, it was a fully invested thing. Wow. You know? Wow. Um, but it just happened to be that day. That was the day. I didn't plan it, anything. It just was like, that was it. It was the, so I guess in a way I didn't have the communication or the maturity to express my feelings sooner. But it wasn't going to, like, that's just who you were at the time. I don't think, like, I don't know. I don't blame you for that part. Um, yeah, I mean, when it boils down to it, waiting for the right day, what does that mean? Does that seem right? Is that even worse? Because then you're literally just being like, yep, it's going to happen, but I have to wait until March 2nd because it's a I Tuesday. Know. Nothing's happening. Like no, it's, it's got, it's outside of the buffer zone of holidays, birthdays, uh, like, Right, because at that point, it's like, well, what are you doing? Like, just bad news is bad news. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I can't do it on Valentine's Day or the day. I, you know, I got to get through the fog of Valentine's Day. It can't be, you know, then it's like March. Then it's June. Then it's another year. Right. And you're like, but you don't want to mess up really... your NCAA tournament. <laughs> yeah. So you got to do it before that. Yeah. It, no. I mean, it is what it, it's, it's, it's at best it's unfortunate because of the coincidence, but that's where it ends. Like mm -hmm. it's just a coincidence. So yeah, if, if you're asking if I'm the asshole now, because it's just a bad coincidence. Like, wh so what was the, because that's my thing is like, so what's the right move? Do a big elaborate Valentine's day. I know. Make go her through think the everything's fine. And then crush her. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, that seems yeah. way more polite. Like lying about lying about the whole process. That seems way more logical. Like, so, yeah, I think it's just uh, an unfortunate circumstance of when it happened and write it up to that. Now, Plus, if now she has a story out of something, it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm always like, well, at least this is a story like <laughs> storytelling is good. So consider that a positive. I mean, um, well, she's, but you know, what's funny is the first while, time so I guess so, it's working. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. We're probably yeah. good. I wouldn't know, but there's no reason to find out <laughs> except for, Ooh, that's, that's an even was better one as, as I want to find guessed, out if guessed, you're good. Yeah. Well, I remember then actually one of the times I did see you in Auburn, like mm. six years ago or something like that. I don't even remember. I think you were like, Hey, met Swabies with uh, Westover and I show up and she's there. <laughs> it's the first time we've seen each other or, or probably said word one to each other since the breakup. And I didn't know how to, I was like, oh, were, fuck. were we <laughs> was hanging like, out with her as well? Yeah. 
I walked into it was like, yeah, I think unless she just happened to be sitting, I think she was hanging out with Westover. Um, but I like huh. they're probably just catching up. It's probably like a holiday thing, you know, just like right. home for the holidays deal. <laughs> but I was I got super blindsided by that. I think we played darts. I think it was like cordial, but it definitely was there was no debrief. There was no like it's probably just a lot of like standoffish. Like I don't know what to do here. <laughs> this is a, are you still mad about that thing? I don't even remember how it went down exactly. <laughs> we don't talk. I don't know. It's weird. Right. We talk remember about something when we from when you're like, yeah, sixteen years ago. Yeah. I, are we spent? Are you are you better? Uh, yeah. We've lived a whole husband. other life since then. Is he then? okay yeah. with it? <laughs> is your husband okay with how I dumped you online at nineteen? I know. And that's the um, thing is like like I, with with many things it's it if you can't get over that stuff like like I I get that in the moment certainly being blindsided by it but like hopefully you think back to like it doesn't two things don't matter one the event in itself shouldn't matter to you so it's like I need to move on but also what doesn't matter is if the other person moved on or not like. So like you kind of terrible have to... if you didn't. <laughs> I guess, but that would be more on her. Like has one of those Steve you Buscemi didn't, lists. You didn't. Yeah. You like, you didn't stab her. Like you dumped her online on Valentine's day. Like if someone holds a grudge over that, that's fucking weird. <laughs> like that's really weird. So it's, that's the thing is like people pick grudges for the weirdest shit. When I hear about pe- grudge people, the reasons people don't talk to other people, I'm like, not even don't talk to anymore, but like really like hold something against someone. There's a difference between just not associating with someone anymore and holding something against them. You can not associate with people anymore. That's fine. That's how it works. Like you put effort into your relationships or you choose not to have the relationship, but like people that hold animosity and they're like, Oh fuck this person. Cause of one time this blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, you need to fucking let that shit go. Like, why are you upset about that? People are weird, man. (laughs) Dude, you're such a good friend. As I heard you say that sentence where you said, you dumped her on Valentine's Day online. That's a her problem, basically. <laughs> I was like, dude, yeah. I, that is an asshole thing to do, I guess, when you say the words like that. But thanks. I appreciate it. You're right. <laughs> it's just it's the combination of those words is real bad and makes it's, you think of the asshole it thing. Sucks, but, I, <laughs> but then but yeah. what? It sucks. Like, that's the thing. But it's like, okay, things suck. Like, all right. And I didn't stab her. Did right. not. So if someone oh. wants to go like, you know what? You were a real asshole when you were 19 and I'm going to hold it over your head while you're 40. That's fucking weird. You're not the same person. If anyone's the same person they were at 19 as 40, you were either God, an, an adult imagine? really, really, really quick, or you still act like a petulant child. But if I was the still same guy at 19, I would be unemployed. I'd be like probably dead in a get- ditch because of how like I handled myself and my attitude and everything like that at 19. So relax. You like, you gotta, you gotta move on. And if it really bothers you, you do have a right to approach the person and say, Hey, at the time this really bothered me, but you have to give that person a chance to go like, Oh, well, I'm really sorry about that. It was a different time. You know, I'd like to, you know, start fresh. Like you have to give people these opportunities. You can't just go like, Oh, you did something bad 20 years ago. Looks like you're a piece of shit forever. <laughs> like, get over it. And if you don't want to, then fucking talk someone else's ear off about it. But I don't, I'm not here for it. It is fun um, when I run into people again from high school or that definitely knew me in a different context that now like 20 something years removed, like you just assume people are adults and you don't even like, it's just the way that you just assume people are different. It's kind of fun that way. Like now it's like kind of a refresh a restart for everybody. You seem everybody's at least a certain level of maturity, hopefully, um, or at least has had some experience where there's not that, yeah. you know, you don't have the high school shit anymore. And it's real nice. It's real nice. <laughs> now I get to watch my niece go through it. I get, you know, high school stuff and, you know, yeah. all that. I'm like, and wow, it's like, that was so important. You can appreciate the fact that you went to the same high school, but you should also both be open to the fact that like it, none of that matters. Like literally it should just be like two strangers meeting each other. Like, cause it's all in st- all intents and purposes. You're meeting someone different. Yep. And sometimes you start a podcast over it. What the fuck? How about it? Um, did you want me to judge your assholishness? Did you have anything? 
No, no, because I also wouldn't give a shit if I was the asshole. So, <laughs> I already know the answer to yours. <laughs> yeah, um, that that is one that is still blank. I swear I have other things, but it's yeah. Um, I don't know because again, it's like I don't. It doesn't matter if someone thinks I'm the asshole for a situation. Yeah. I'm not going to change my we'll result just, one way or yeah. the other. I try not to be, I try to do my best with stuff. But if you told me like, oh, you're not the asshole. I mean, I guess it feels a little bit better. But if I'm going to practice what I preach, it doesn't fucking matter if you think I'm an asshole, to be honest with you. It matters what I think of what I do. And I try to do the right thing. But this is the way. Yeah. So to the we wheel. Can judge other things. Yeah, look to the wheel. Yeah, I can use it as a platform for my own, you know. If you need to, and you yeah, need and me yeah, to, to let you know. Off. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. You got it. <laughs> That's what we use it for. All right. You got it. Prefect. Let's go. Big money. Big money. Big money. A news story. A news story. Um, what I, I so last week we did the ferverts. No, sorry, furries. They're not ferverts. They're regular people or animals, and they deserve to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I messed that up. Yeah. Um, this is kind of wild to me. So in uh, this was in, I think, the Sacramento time or whatever the Sacramento like NBC okay. station is. A woman thought to be missing was stuck 15 hours overnight up on a gondola at Heavenly Ski Resort. So I guess she went up the ski like like right before close and she didn't want to go down. She was like too tired. So she went on a gondola to go down and they stopped it like two minutes in and forgot that she was on there or something like that. <laughs> I mean, that's just terrible. That's honestly real bad uh, customer service. I would say but we're not here to judge that <laughs> customer uh, <laughs> service. You think they yeah, would let it go through like around every time. Like, make sure. Yeah. Make sure everybody's off of there. But she had to, she was rubbing her hands and her feet. She was like yelling to people like workers down below and they couldn't hear her. <laughs> she was just like, uh -huh. so I was wondering based on that. I mean, they found her the next morning. Oh, that'd be terrible. What a terrible night. Um, I guess a couple questions. Would you rather be stuck in a gondola overnight or okay. presumably, I mean, the height you probably get over, but the cold would be tough, but at least you, I mean, there's an element of fresh air to it. Or would you rather be stuck in an elevator for 15 hours? So an elevator or a gondola suspended? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there, da is there, is it, does it come with the, the wonder of danger? Like this is, that's part of it, right? Is not, is the unknown? Uh, not knowing. I guess if you're on the gondola, you assume by morning, at least somebody will show up. The elevator, you might not know. I mean, elevator could be 10 minutes. It could be. Yeah, I mean, I guess you'd think barring, an elevator would be like. Barring know. un, barring like dangerous death conditions. I would rather the gondola than the elevator. I think so, too. I don't I don't think a gondola is going to break off and fall. If I, If I'm stuck in an elevator, I have no clue if that thing all of a sudden is just going to plummet right i don't know why i'm anywhere i can't see anywhere a gondola a big difference is that you can see so your your sanity you you can see things you have visibility so even with the cold like i said barring that it's not like death cold um <coughs> cut that cut that um fuck uh, <coughs> cut that cut that sneeze cut that sneeze. oh my um, god good, good god. god that's going too barring, far barring barring that um yes i think the gondola is i could handle that psychologically a lot better than i can handle the the elevator yourself it seems yeah being stuck in an elevator seems like the worst feeling in the world i don't like i've seen videos of people that were on there like filming each other i guess if you're mm. with somebody it could be helpful but being alone had be just not being able to just not knowing when or if anybody can hear you just not like feeling the claustrophobia would kick in pretty quick. I would say within 10 minutes for me, I couldn't do another 14 mm -hmm. hours of that. I don't know how I would, I don't know my heart would be pounding. 
I would probably just have to concuss myself. <laughs> like run my head into the wall and just like try to pass out. <sighs> but the gondola, yeah, the fresh yeah. air. Where where would you like to be? Like if you were at um so a ski resort, where where would you like to spend a night in a business? Like not, you know, outside an elevator, but like uh if you got to spend a night at a like what business or resort, some kind of situation. Like if you snuck basically you oh. snuck in or they left you there accidentally. Oh. Well, who? <laughs> that is an interesting question, right? Because are you really? I mean, you know what? I think though. I think the correct answer is like nineteen ninety three J C Penny, because like yeah. talk about talk Mall, about you yeah. have your, all of these TVs. You'd have video games that you could hook up. But you also had those JCPenney like display beds that if you were tired, you could sleep on the display bed. Oh, so like strategic. Yeah, you got options at a at a 90s JCPenney's or Sears. But I think JCPenney's is what I'm angling towards just because of the variety. Now, is there sustenance? Because that's that's a tough part, too. So like my another thought was like, maybe I go to Bass Pro. Bass Pro would be a good one. You have cots. So there is sleeping abilities and and actually um, air mattresses and stuff. So, okay, hold on. Best Pro would also carry a lot of fun stuff to do. You could set up target practice and, like, shoot bows and arrows just for the shit of it. Like, it don't matter that you don't know what you're doing. Um, you could, you know, watch the fishies. You could maybe even fish in the fish tank for something to do. Catch and go, of course. Um but I feel like you could, uh, do they have like things like astronaut food, like freeze dried food? I could have sustenance. I'm, I'm saying sustenance as if I'm there for more than the one night that you told me I'd I be know, locked yeah. in there. I'm like, but what if I die? Jeff, it's fucking yeah. 12 hours. Like, Do relax. they have a vending machine? <laughs> but right. They would. But Bass Pro, I believe, you know, that coolers towards the exit. So you do have drinks and stuff. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to change my answer to night? Bass Pro. I'm not, well, they don't have a gun range, so I don't want to like be too destructive. Shoot them in That's the why store. I said I would. <laughs> okay. Go, spear fishing or like gun fishing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, so I think there's a lot going on in Bass Pro. Bass Pro, I think, would be a lead contender. What about you? Yeah, that's sensible. I mean, obviously, arcade. <laughs> so I'm not going to go that direction. That'd be fun. You know, I'd really just love to like have my way overnight with like a uh, sperm bank, probably just just dabble in all the samples. Just I really get it. I want a little piece of me in the city, you know, everywhere, and nobody knows about it. I really want to have that. Hey, why are all of these uh, supposedly genius six foot kids uh, five foot eight and uh, uh, have male pattern baldness immediately? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. By that time, I'm gone. I'm long gone. It was one night. A one night wow. stand with the world. I would have it. An overnighter in the sperm yeah. bank. Or a Chuck E. Cheese in the ball That's pit. That's an assumption Fun of related, being able to do separate a lot activities. of damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Unrelated, but. I don't think Where, would I, where did I do the least anymore? damage? Do ball pits even <laughs> exist really? anymore? In 2024? I, I think they do for adults. I see a bunch of Instagram videos of like, now they're all like white and it's like, meant to be um a really posh experience i think you're supposed to be on molly or something like that <laughs> or mushrooms probably it's supposed to be a oh, posh no. experience no no like ball pits uh, i don't know about chuck does chuck ball pits exist? are now I offered elsewhere yeah it's like an adult thing where now. are there like, kind of like oh bubble parties God. or you know it's like one of these no. one of these one of these things jeff like it's a it's a party thing posh a posh thing like... you're telling me there are adults <laughs> that are pissing in those ball pits as much as kids did i guarantee you uh, that there is nothing posh about a ball pit no, I, fuck that. I literally just saw a reel two days ago of like a couple like in a ball pit and they were like doing a video of themselves laying backwards <laughs> and see there's another guy behind he just as soon as one guy goes down the other guy plops his ass right on his face doesn't realize it just butt, butt to face in the ball pit. And that's what you'd expect. Mm-hmm. So that's what you're in for. I think yeah. they have m- machines that clean the balls. They do clean the balls, Jeff. They suck them up no. into a vacuum and shoot them back out. <laughs> real, It's a real operation they got going on here. <laughs> Legit. 
No. One one no. more time in your life? Not a ball pit? One more time? No. And, like, in Philly, there's, like, some... Caitlin went to... Uh, there's, like, this bar that used to exist where, like, to get into the bar, I think you, like, entered through, like, a slide into a ball pit or something. Like, that was how you got into the bar, mm-hmm. was you entered in sliding in. And I don't know if that's cool and, like, reminiscent or if it's just weird. But... Maybe if it's like the entrance and like you have to enter this way. Okay, great. 10 seconds makes me feel like a kid for 10 seconds. But like, yeah, I don't need to play in a ball pit. Like that's not interesting to me. That's not fascinating. Ball pits are not like, I don't big, big. What are you going to do this time? Well, I'll tell you this next move. I'm going to go into the ball pit and then I'm going to pop up and all the balls are going to go over. And that's it. That's my move. I'm definitely going to try to lick four of the balls. That's just what kids do. You know, Mm -hmm. gross. Just a hub of disease. I would, yeah, the slide would be fun, except you'd hate to be the guy that's struggling to get out of there. It's like almost too awkward. Takes you an extra couple steps. (laughs) So you need help getting out. It's like those, uh, how about one of those foam pits that's really designed for people learning skateboard and bike tricks. But sometimes like, out of shape oh, yeah, parents like the find their way squares, into them. The yeah. Foam squares and stuff that are just, put, yeah, like yeah. gymnastics and for stuff a lark, and everything. Yeah, do a cannonball into it and then can't get out without <laughs> the aid of like six people. Yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> those things are actually scary to me. Those those yeah. foam pits are not, I mean, I'd probably do it, but there is an underlying fact of like, oh my God, I would never be able to get out. And it's, yeah, again, not something I'm looking to do. I swear I like fun, but not, <laughs> not like I want to be a kid again, do weird things that kids enjoy fun. That's not fun to me. Fair. Did so, yes, you, you are the news? asshole. Oh, I thought I thought every segment just ends with me judging of whether or not you're an asshole. <laughs> yes, yes. So for that one, we for that one, yeah, assholes. you're an asshole. Um, well, you know what? <laughs> no one else has been in the news and it's kind of been over the last six months, but it's weird. So like that this week, I believe. Um, two guys, the opening statements were presented for two guys being uh, on trial for the murder of Run DMC's Jam Master J. But also oh, really? in the last few months, we have an arrest and a soon-to-begin trial um, for the guy who is going to be on trial for killing Tupac. So, like, in the news in 2024 are trials for rappers that died over 20 years ago. And, like, I don't say, these the aren't police settled have- yet? The pol- no, because the police like kept like closing the case, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, we're still working on it." I'm like, "You're not. No one's working on a murder case for 20 yeah. years. That's not how it works." Isn't it like, the first 48 hours? Right. <laughs> I have another show telling me after 48 <laughs> hours, you guys just go like, "This isn't fucking happening." So like, it's it's kind of weird, and I don't trust anything in society. So like, I don't trust that these are open murder cases. I don't even trust necessarily that. These people are actually going on trial. I don't, I think it's everything is sensationalized. I think half the news is made is like, first off, news outlets are trash. Like all of them. Everything is, everything is a tabloid. We used to make fun of tabloids because they didn't wait. They weren't objective news sources, but now that's every news, every news source, CNN, tabloid, MSNBC, tabloid. Like U.S. War, like USA Today hear? tabloid. Everything's a fucking tabloid. Yes. And it's like World War Three could break out and that would be on page C12 because fucking Justin Timberlake's song about Britney would be on the fucking headlines. And, and the gondola story, too. And the gondola story. It's got to be up so, there. But, you know, really, in reality, really thrilled. Hoping, to, hoping Biggie's uh, murderer is going to get found soon so if you're listening biggie's murderer they're on to you because everyone else is going to try turn yourself in these old murders yep yeah we're getting, we're getting biggie justice and you're an a- and you are an a- and that makes you the asshole it does but so does it make the news the news is the asshole Ooh. hot take um wheel of spin choices we love spin. Two, Two truths, truths and a lie. And a lie. All right. Um, um, you know what? 
I might have to make, well, I had one, but I might have uh, messed up one of it already. <laughs> that would be one truth and a lie. Perfect. Well, because mine were, I should have corroborated these things <laughs> together. Because mine were, um, mm -hmm. so never broken up with someone, <laughs> never said <laughs> we should just be friends. Never slid into Facebook DMs. How about this? Never. <laughs> hey, maybe you so just wait, forgot the first, the first one half was of never broke up with someone. Maybe you forgot the first twenty minutes of the program. And we can That's do this. That's a lie. I win. Uh, wow, um, you're good at this. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> All okay. right, you want me to go? You want me to go? You we'll seem workshop. like you're in the pickle. Um, well, have you ever, I guess, really what I want to get to is, have you ever slid into Facebook DMs in your life? I think I've done it a couple times, and it always felt weird to me. I mean, I feel like Instagram is different now because it's easier to have. Like, everybody's better at having sort of like a social network relationship or yeah. something. Like, I have relationships that are strictly just Instagram um dms and it's not as like skeezy in a way as facebook could have been like i remember basically asking girls out on facebook dm versus like getting their number or in person and i don't know why i just feel like some of those were low oh, points for me yeah no i <laughs> did know? i definitely did in like in like college and stuff because i don't know self-confidence like no i don't i definitely did because that was easier and less stressful for me for, for some reason. And like, yeah, like you say, it's like, it's like, Oh, I bet the perception of that might've been a lot different than what I thought it was. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I dated a girl for a few months, um, post-college basically we met at a party, but very, very, very briefly, um, became friends on Facebook and then just, uh, started chatting through Facebook and, eventually started dating, but, um, yeah, I mean, right. The context is meetings. First off, you use the term slide into your DM. So that is to me, that's not messaging someone through direct message that sliding into DMS means you were being sketched from the beginning. And like, the, it, I think it's a very, and it's like somebody you didn't really have a relationship tone. with. Correct. Yeah. It's not like somebody right. that was already so a friend a or already tone. like, but yeah. Using it yeah. as an outlet to, but even meeting someone, sliding into your DMs makes it, I think there's the connotation with that is that you also were being skeevy probably within like three messages. Like, yo, what's up, baby? Why don't you let me see that fat ass? Like, oh, like messaging someone them. through different, through different <laughs> social media forums and stuff. It's whatever. Um, Listen, like that's, it is what it is. Like, that's just how people meet. People yeah. don't want to, people don't want to meet in person, but they also don't want people to message them, but they also don't want people to text them or call them. And I'm like, so you just want to be left alone. No, just want the right person, the exact right person to do it. <laughs> that's all. Just be the right yeah, person. Yeah, unprompted. Not the wrong unprompted. person. Unprompted. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking for a very specific thing. Oh, are you going out and looking for it? No. What I do is I sit back, hope it reaches out to me, and I reject everything in the meantime. That seems healthy. <laughs> Good. But those were like, I just think about a lot of those. I mean, I guess it could have happened in person, but it was like somebody I'd meet somewhere, like maybe be hanging around each other for like three or four hours. Didn't in that time at all like ask for the number or anything, but then later yeah. on Facebook, then went in and was like, Hey, do you want to hang out? I'm, I know I could have asked you out, but since I'm such a dweeb um, and I was being such a little bitch about it, I'm going to ask no, you it, now on Facebook. Yeah. Because well, the, it's, <laughs> yeah, the, like, cause rejection, rejection, when, when you're by yourself is fine. It's physical rejection. Socially, you know that that person either a is going to reject you and you're going to feel like shit and embarrassed because then you're still standing in front of them or B you're not going to get their truthful answer. Whereas at least online, you're going to get their truthful answer. So there's an argument that it's a better way of doing it because that person won't feel pressured to go like, Oh, I don't know. Maybe 
Like they're going to feel more pressured possibly out of social awkward that they don't want to make you feel bad or be too, they don't want to be too rejecting. So maybe it's the better idea is to do it that way. Yeah. Either way. I mean, I guess it'll work out if somebody wants to hang out with you. It doesn't really matter how you ask because they will. <laughs> that's just that's Correct. basically the long and short. Correct. It, you know, Yeah. It's let's be honest. Of, uh, it boils down how it to goes. however. Yeah. It, yeah. That's just the approach to it. The that's not the end product. So mm. I like it. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to do All it. All right. Yeah. Right. I'm going to get back on Facebook. Often. You know what? I'm getting back on Facebook. <laughs> wow. I'm not. Protect. I'm not hide, that, no. hide your DMs. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Look out, Jennifer Lawrence. Yep. Yeah. If the man, if, key, key trick is if the page that you go to, it says the only options are follow and like, I don't think you should waste your time DMing it. <laughs> no way, man. I DM'd it and they sent this huge paragraph back to me like instantly, almost like as if it was triggered by yeah. my messaging yeah. them. So I think she's interested. She yeah. gave me. Did you know there's a, a Sephora pri- in Romania and <laughs> they can use gift cards there? <laughs> right. All I got to do is food. wire this yeah. money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah all right. What's your, what do you got? Um. All right. Do you have a non-mangled two truths <laughs> and a lie? Uh, yeah, I don't think we've disclosed them. So two truths and a lie. I have smoked weed out of a hollowed out pineapple. I have consumed 64 ounces of Gatorade in under a minute. I have gone three days without eating anything. Hmm. All seem likely. (laughs) I'm going to say... Because I feel like you would have no problems chugging. Three days without eating could have been a nice little depressive spell. I mean, that's definitely in your wheelhouse. Thanks. Um, <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Uh, no, it was four days. <laughs> You're wrong. Um, <laughs> Idiot. Uh, I'm going to say the pineapple was not hollow. There was still pineapple juice in there. And that's the lie. <laughs> still chunks. That is the lie. I ha- I have not smoked out of a pineapple. Is it really? I did smoke out of an, I did oh. smoke out of an apple, but I just changed the fruit. Of course. Um, yeah, so, no. The weird part about the not eating for three days is I wasn't hungry. I wasn't sick. I wasn't upset. It was in 2011. I had moved to Buffalo, and, I, like, I didn't realize it until, like, I ate like probably like eight breakfast, a late breakfast on one, on like a Tuesday, went to work, didn't eat at work. Cause I wasn't hungry. Came home, went to sleep, woke up the next day, like missed breakfast was at work, didn't eat. And then I think it was like that next day. And I was just like, when was the last time I ate anything? <laughs> and so like, I like realized I hadn't eaten in like almost 48 hours. And I'm like, Huh. And then the next day I'm like, I'm still not hungry. I'm, and then I was curious. So then I'm just like, I'm not hungry. So I'm just not going to eat right now. And so I just had some water and stuff. But like I didn't eat until it was, I think it was from a Tuesday until like Friday and I just didn't eat. And I'm just like, I felt like I could have gone a little bit further, but I was like working out and stuff too. So I'm like, this can't possibly be a good idea. And I feel yeah. like at some point this could be like <laughs> scary and I could crash or something. So. I decided to eat. When yeah, did the I went, delusions start? I went like 72 <laughs> hours, pe- felt perfectly fine and just never ate. And I'm like, huh, that was weird. But yep, totally. Un- 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 I'm okay, like I'm anything intense. Richard, what's happening? <laughs> you so, just go through like, can't you go like, doesn't it mess with like your no, head? I felt like, perfectly didn't it all? <laughs> like, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. God. Yeah, so curious to see how how long I could go. Um, it lost a few pounds too. It felt really good. <laughs> uh so the the Gatorade one was <laughs> we had we were it was my sophomore year of college, and there was like four of us. Well, there were six of us that lived in a suite, and four of us were talking about chugging abilities. And one of the guys was like, "Yo, we should have a contest. You could." Five bucks a piece. Who can chug a 64-ounce Gatorade, drink it the fastest? And I'm like, yeah, I'm down. 
And so <laughs> I think, is that, I'm, a, is there a bottle of 64 ounce or did you, is that, I'm trying yeah. to envision it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. the normal big ones it's now good. are 32 ounce that you would, a yeah, big one in right. a, in a gas station is a 32 ounce, but yeah, there's 64 ounce The they look like it's like a half, it's a, it is a half gallon. So right. actually, I'm not sure that they sell them now anymore. Now that you say that they might not be sold anymore, but the other three guys, two of them were like athletic guys. One average sized male, not intensely fit, but certainly I was the biggest guy out of the three or out of the four. So the one guy's like, I know what I'll do. I'll make myself thirsty. So he goes and like runs two miles before the competition, thinking he's making himself thirsty. Again, I'm not sure <laughs> the logic behind it. It seems wrong. Right. Yeah. So anyway, we start, we crack them open. It, it, they all had to be warm and orange. We had to make sure that it was a level playing field. Oh, so it was warm God. and orange. Not warm, like we didn't nuke it, but it was room temperature orange. I know, but yeah. And then orange too. So we all start Classic. going and, <laughs> and I finish. I'm like, I maybe plugged it with my tongue for like a breath and then went back to it. And like 38 seconds later, and I drop it down. And like, I look at the other three guys and they're yeah, like, yeah, hell yeah. they're like maybe 16, 20 ounces through. And I'm like, oh, I went faster than I had to. Huh? <laughs> and like, I'm like, I'm like, oops. So then I like sat there and I like, in like two minutes, I'm like, oh my, like, cause we weren't allowed to throw up. So I'm like, it just hurt. Like I felt my stomach hurt so, so bad. Cause I'm like, well, there are 64 mm. ounces of liquid in you right now. And yeah, I was, I was in a good amount of pain, but for a college kid, I'm like, that was the easiest 15 bucks I had ever earned. Um, 15 bucks, <laughs> $15, um, <laughs> probably laid down on my bed for about two hours in absolute pain. But 15 bucks, baby. So, yeah. That's stupid is, stupid does, here. sir. Yeah. Uh, did I ever tell you I paid, I think it was Tozer, maybe Zach and I, we paid him like 20 bucks to drink. We got some Italian, I think we were at Hilton Head. It was like our senior, whatever, college trip. And some Italian place in there was like a little olive oil. It was probably the size of like, you know, a soda can, probably like two thirds of the way filled, just on the table to drizzle. And they were like, I'll pay you 20 bucks if you drink that, chug oh that. Oh, fucking God. And he did. And he was throwing up all oh. night. It was the worst thing he'd ever done. He's like, I wouldn't do it for, I wouldn't do it ever again for $100. I was like, I felt bad. I was like, I really ruined a night of our <laughs> trip here. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to hit that hard. I thought maybe you get sick or it'll, co I was like, no, right. co coat your belly so we can drink tonight, you know? It'll really pay off. Like, get that olive oil in your tummy how quick how quick yeah. of a turnaround was it i think he didn't throw up there but as we were sitting like within probably 15 minutes he's like i gotta go we gotta go i can't and i was like no shit i was like wow and it was so just painful what retching, that i think for the rest of his night yeah nice. so do not drink olive oil or orange gatorade don't tell me what to do you think that, yeah i mean i guess that's just straight up stomach pain from having that much liquid because it's probably not terrible for you right unless it's got sugars in it. i don't know at least you're hydrated yeah oh you my god with that. so so many electrolytes <laughs> yeah i mean really really beneficial when you when it comes down to it and uh gloss over but yeah the apple smoking was always it was a day for that that was always yep. nice yep. always crisp and tasty give it a try highly recommend all right Make small talk perfect. It's what we're it's basically the whole show. Yeah, this would be a great way to finish out. <laughs> um, I did. Why is that get one of them? Like that on a couple that things. Small talk. Oh, please, please. Because <laughs> we got to have room for this. We got to have room yeah. for this. Um, uh huh. Well, I think we we talked last night, so I made some money on some football games. Or the yeah, I had the uh, the ultimate. It's only happened four or five times in history where a team came back from like more than 17 points down in a playoff game. I put $50 on the Niners to overcome a 17 point deficit at plus 320. Much like the week before betting against the Bills, you bet against losers. Losers lose, all right? 
that's my <laughs> recommendation. Like right now, I'm watching a season of MTV The Challenge, and this year they brought back all the people that haven't lost, haven't won before, because they're losers. And it's great watching the game because none of them can get out of their own way, because they're all losers. <laughs> they're just a lose forever. And if you bet against them, at some point they will lose again. So I was nice. fortunate enough that the Lions did Lion things and lost um but in the game before i i was recovering though from losing money in the earlier game because the chiefs won um ravens really shit the bed so now we've got um fresh into this niners chief super bowl fine whatever big teams awful what is your take on kelsey swifty mm. we've never we've never dissected it on this wow. pod, we don't need to dissect yeah. it. I'm just curious as to what you, <sighs> what your take is. I mean, you obviously right. have a connection to it. You, you, you're in the, you're in the family, basically being a Jason Kelsey fan. So then you have to, you're basically like the brother-in-law of, you know, Jason mm-hmm. Kelsey. And then by proxy, you know, you're basically brother-in-law, in-law, brothers, sister-in-law. You know, you're basically you, you. There's a world where you end up at some kind of football show up hangout party for Jason Kelsey in Philly. And then Travis and Taylor happen to be there because it's like his birthday or something like that. And yeah. so it's not mm-hmm. out of the realm of possibility. No, no, but. no. That all seems reasonable. <laughs> um, yeah. Now in this house, I mean, Caitlin's a big Taylor Swift fan um, and she is uh, an Eagles fan. So Jason Kelsey, my take is, is I'm like, okay, I'm like, they're dating as one can imagine. I don't give a shit, but also people, Like, I mean, there's nothing better than bros just being so actually not even bros, just everyone being like, hate, they hate her for some reason. (laughs) Like, I'm like, this girl is a self-made billionaire and one of the hardest working musicians out there. I'm like, knock it off. I'm like, she's not the problem. I'm like, if you want to be pissed at the NFL or the broadcast stations, because they won't let it go by all means, it is fucking dumb and annoying. Um, Travis Kelsey, I go back and forth on. He seems like a likable guy, but he also is kind of a tool bag. Um, yeah. Uh, and in the last ma- in the in the last couple games, he's been agitating to watch in football. But I mean, everyone said it's like you know it was kind of a bullshit relationship, and I'm like, she's still going to games. Um, people said that you know people cry about her complaining that the bit sk- schedule is busy and it's hard for her to go to all these games and she's tired and people complain about that. I'm like, she's like in the middle of a world tour and she somehow keeps showing up at these fucking games. I'm like, again, that's a pl- like that deserves applaud, not like criticism. So I, it's it's annoying because I am drained of it and I don't care, but I also find myself needing to defend her taylor swift because everyone is just so fucking bent out of shape about it and but i mean yeah it is exhausting so that's my take is i support her um not not really a fan of her music but i support her as a human she seems like she's a good person um and she's good at what she does and she's trying to be like a nice person but everyone just wants to fucking hate her but that's that's america that's america in a nutshell i love that they are in the Super Bowl together. I love that Taylor Swift's in the Super Bowl. I think it's like the perfect American thing. I love that people are going to hate it, that we have to talk about it for two weeks. Like, it's got me more excited for any Super Bowl in a long time just because of this. I um, wish she was doing I like, like the Americana. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. Or like she was the halftime show. That'd be, I would love oh, that. would have been amazing. Shove it down, like, shove it down they, everyone's they just, fucking throat. They can push Usher to next year. Yeah. I mean, she's going to get probably shit faced in the skybox, So she's not really gonna be able to perform. She wants to be there for the fun. I'm sure. But it's not like, I love it. Cause it's like yesterday she went on the field or whatever, or whenever they won the game. And it was like really genuinely sweet. And like, they're not shoving themselves into the public eye at all. Like they rarely, I mean, she shows up for games, but she's not like pushing it out there. They're not showing up to places out. You know, he didn't go to like the Emmys or whatever the deal was or the Oscars. I don't know, but, it's like they just kind of like each other and they're doing their thing. They just happen to be famous and good at what they do. <laughs> people can't get over it. And, and I love people it. People fucking hate it. Yep. I know. Um, so I'm very excited so for the Super Bowl. I can't wait to see how people get out of, been out of shape about it. Yeah, I mean. Why can't we just root for I, love? I can't I can't wait for the over-under. Uh, I want to see what the over-under is going to be on betting for how many times they show Taylor Swift. 
I know that number's that, mom, that number's good. Sure. That number's yeah. going to be high. The over under, I bet, is going to be probably in like the mid teens. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a high number, and I feel like I have to take the over, <laughs> no matter what it is. But I know there's going to be a bet for what what she, what is she going to be wearing? Is she going to be wearing a jersey or no, or just red? All right, you know it's a All lot. Right. The Super Bowl is going to mean like, everything to a lot of people, mm-hmm. <laughs> and. uh I, and it's like she's gotta like him because Travis is kind of a buffoon. <laughs> he's yeah, kind of like a sweet idiot. He's you know. Oh yeah, he's, he's not a very dumb. bright. He's a du- no, he's a dummy. <laughs> he's a dummy. He did That's his a nice catchphrase way again. A, yeah, he's a dumb dummy. That isn't even his catchphrase. <laughs> at the end of this, like last year at the end of the Super Bowl, he goes, "You gotta fight for your right." To party, the classic BC Boys song, and everybody's like, "Ha ha, big dumb guy says thing." <laughs> it's funny, and then he doubled down on it at the UFC Championship. He did. It's like, "Congratulations, you've just had the most receptions. You've just passed Jerry Rice of all time." What does that moment mean to you? Yo, know, big props out to Jerry Rice. All I gotta say is, you gotta fight. He did it again with his girlfriend, his world famous girlfriend songwriter. On the floor watching him, and that's what he does. He does it again. It's just like you're just a big dumb ape. I can't believe she's into you. It's, but it's so sweet. I mean, he must be pretty awesome. It's like, uh, but good for them. You know, I'm happy for him. I like it. I think it's good for the game. Football is entertainment. Let's remember that. It's a that's joke, it, right? Exactly. <laughs> like I love ridiculous. how people are like they're ruining football. I'm like, but what do you mean? Because it's just enter- like. <laughs> relax guy yeah you're besmirching the beauty of this yeah. game where guys get cte and kill their spouses <laughs> this is a right. beautiful game this is, this is a let's sh- not this is a soil shame. this with love right. and, uh, it's coming from the guy wearing yeah. his high school letterman jacket <laughs> yeah a um, bunch of al bundy's out there being like yeah i used to be great yeah. bunch of uncle rico's all right one more spin for the win. All right. Let's take it. Let's take it there. Let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> Ooh, scroll them. Easy. Oh. Too easy. Uh-huh. All right. That's the one. That's the one we do. It's almost like it was meant to be. Almost like I'm running out of people that I'm going to remember. Almost. All right, I'll go first. Uh, all right. Uh, Caleb S. Oh, Caleb. He's my, uh, he was the guy who did, ran the Dale Carnegie class that I did this last year. This guy was so into the everything that so that was like the communication leadership whatever effective communication class Mm. and he was so into it jeff you're here and i need you to come up here the really let us know what you're tell us how you're going to inspire us today so the way you jokingly did it on one of our podcasts before that's the way he would always be um but what was great is that he'd say those words um and he was like i would say the best thing he could he like really remember people's names and their stories uh, which was kind of a skill because then he would be like, well, Matt, why don't you share what uh, Katarina, something about her that she has shared about her? And I was like, um, well, she's just really good in the really good bakery manager, I think. And she did, I think she did a really good job with that. And she's like, I work in seafood. And I was like, totally. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember your story. <laughs> but, like, but he remembered, yeah, yeah, like, he remembered yeah, everything yeah. about everybody. Yeah. So I got to give him credit for that. It was a skill. I mean, he do a lot of the, the corny stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, maybe that's a good job to have though, where the hardest thing you have to do is be corny and get people to like buy into the corniness. Cause it's not that much of heavy lifting. All you're doing is being like, okay, now we're doing it really. You're having a lot of energy right now, Jeff. And now I want to see if you can bring it down to here during your thing. You know, it's like just a lot of that. I'm like, and he just does it from home and I didn't realize it. It Took me like three weeks to realize he wasn't actually in an office. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he was just at a standing desk. He would wear the same blue button up shirt every time. And I thought he was actually in an office. It's like Dale Carnegie and I had a desk back there. And all of a sudden it like, he looked like he was sitting. I was like, you're not, 
This technology is getting real good, Caleb. I didn't realize you had a, you're green screening it here or not even, but he's probably in his sixties. All he does is work from home. I called him once cause I missed a session. I was like, Hey, what do I have to prep for next week? And he's like, Oh, you just caught me at a good time. My wife's sick. So I'm making some homemade soup. And it was just like, what just wanted to share everything with me. No, no. Remind me about what you, you know, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, you're good at this. Like if I wasn't hip to what you're doing, I think that you were genuinely interested in me, but since I, I know what this class is and one of the things, one of the things is called be genuinely interested in people. I know it's a bit, you can fuck okay? right off. We can cut the charade here. We can cut the charade, <laughs> but you're doing a real good job of it. <laughs> you're a real good actor. I got to give you props for that. Um, so if I was so inclined, I would take more of what he does. Um, but I'm probably not. <laughs> it's a good idea. I can see why it's effective and it could be helpful in situations. I just don't have the energy for it. You know? Yeah. I, it's just too I, much. I do it as a trainer sometimes um, to bring people out of their shell, but there, there's absolutely where I'm like, I could really ham it up if I want to. I'm like, but no, I'm not going to do that. Cause I'll want me to shut up. And if I want me to shut up, then, then I can't keep selling it. So. Well, and we'd have to, I don't know if I brought it up once, but like we'd, what we had to read the book too. And then we give our feedback. So one of the, he'd always respond to like everybody's thing. It was crazy. Like how much he would respond. But one week he didn't respond to my, I put in like so something about being persuasive or something like that. And I was like, I don't know. It kind of makes me feel a little skeezy and too sales many. I get the idea of it, but it's just like, it makes me feel out of my shell in terms of like, I'm just acting and not being genuine. And some of this feels too like a sales technique versus like being genuinely, but then no response. He ghosted me on that one. <laughs> didn't respond to it. I was like, gotcha. <laughs> Figured it out. Hey, Let's bit. see. All right. So I landed on, well, actually I land. What do we do if we land on someone where we know the same person? Um, should I go? The oh, next that's person? fun. I don't know. So I, don't, well, I don't know. That we'll, could be we'll, fun. we'll try it on for size. So, the person Should that I landed we risk on, it, risk it all. The, per, the person I landed on was Andy Wells. <laughs> oh so, shit! Yeah. So I don't know the last time I saw Andy. Uh, we both went Me to high neither. school with, with, with Andy. Um, he, well, I feel like is Andy a pilot? Do I have multiple friends that are pilots from high school? But I think Andy. Um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know if I've seen Andy in the last 20 years. Um, but obviously, I knew him originally. How do you have his I number? Actually... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Got it heads, at some point. Up. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I might have gotten his number 20 years ago if I saw him. Like, um, yeah. I knew Andy actually before you because I knew Andy through soccer mm -hmm. growing up. And I, his dad, Jim, was my soccer coach for many years um on the chipman diggers um in youth soccer where i ho honed my skills as a goalie aka i was the fat kid and that's where he put fat kids <laughs> in soccer um but I, I recall being fairly decent at goalie um but yeah uh andy was always a, a really fun smiling kid andy was always a, a happy kid to be around um we were never close friends, but he was kind of the soccer buddy. So it was kind of nice to see him in school, but we never really hung out never really sat at the same lunch table. I don't think anything of that nature, but kind of like he would, Andy became quickly one of like the, like probably my, one of my first acquaintances where it's like, Oh, if I'm, am I, I'm in high school. Do I already have acquaintances where it's like, we used to be friends, but we're not really friends anymore, but we're still friendly. Like, I guess that would be like the definition of an acquaintance. So like he was acquaintance mm. before, before I was an adult because he was a friend from a very specific thing, but we never really continued to hang out, out outside of that. Um, so yeah, Andy, um, I know he's married living. Yep. Still don't know that. I'm pretty sure he doesn't live in New York. I can confidently say that. Let's see if I know where Andy lives. I Bethlehem, see his folks come into Wegman oh, still, in and it's like, okay. Um, okay. It's one of those where it's weird to see other friends, other people's parents, because like you don't know if they remember you, even though they they might. Correct. Uh, so I never really say anything unless somebody says it to me. 
I also didn't have like an extensive, like it was cool. Cause I think I became friends with him in sixth grade um, here and there. And I joined, I think I played modified soccer. And one of my favorite memories is I was hanging out at his house once. I think we were in sixth grade and he had like a three legged iguana that he would just let roam around in his room. And that was cool as shit. But we were like, he's like, Oh, I have Ace Ventura. And I had, I hadn't seen it yet. And I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet. And then he's like, wait, didn't this other, didn't like a new movie come out? And it was dumb and dumber. So his dad took us to go see Dumb and Dumber that day. We saw it. it was my first Dumb and Dumber was with Andy Wells wow. in the movie theater. We saw Lauren Holly's butt and we were like, oh, dude, butt cheek. Whoa. I mean, <laughs> but he was a get. It was, it was big. It was big at 11 years 11 old. 11 years you know? old. That was a big get. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember he played hockey, too, for a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. And. He wasn't very good, but he didn't. He had just started like when he was like 12 or something like that. And he played. We had like one team squirt team or whatever. And the coach would like never play him. It was so rude. And, like his dad. I remember his dad coming down to the bench. When I was like, hey, coach, you think you could play like, you know, and he gets some playing time and play some of the other kids that aren't playing, you know, since it's usually we'd be losing anyway. Uh, but he got so he was such a fun loving kid. But I remember one day the coach said something and he goes, fuck you. To him. <laughs> He was so Andy mad. Did? He was yes, yeah. Or he, or he yes. yelled "fuck you" to the or some some from the bench. He yelled "fuck you" to somebody, and it was definitely either at the coach or ref or something. He's like, "Shut the fuck up" or something like that. <laughs> the coach was like, "Your bench." And he's like, well, "What's the fucking difference? <laughs> Not playing anyway." <laughs> it, was like, it was so good. It was such an epic blow up at like twelve or thirteen years wow, old. From mild manner to Andy. And I'm like, I know, never wow. did any of that shit. But he was like. Cool, because he was like, I think he was technically a popular kid in sick, whatever that meant in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. But he was like, also just hung out with our um, ridiculous kids table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would flush things on the toilet or whatever, or do eating challenges. Just mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. the nerdy kids. Um, yeah, what a world to balance. But yeah, good guy, good good pull. Yeah, yeah. I'll have cool. to I'll have to slide into his Facebook DMs. <laughs> Oh, definitely. What's up. Now that we know that you're not the asshole for doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Another successful 40 minute. You bet. You bet. You're coming really good at oh. that in year two. Really, t- yeah. really tying it down to that uh, duration. Yeah. Well, the next time we talk, I will have had a vacation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, May have gone to an allergist, maybe a psychiatrist. I'm going to be a new person, so get a good look. Because wow. after this, I will be zen. I will be at peace, rested. Um, I will be able be to breathe asshole. more deeply, more sustained. <laughs> I will be. Asshole I will. AF. <laughs> I will be a. I will be a man at peace who also has clear airways and be able to breathe. Yeah. So I'm really pumped about yeah. that. I will finally be able to meditate, you know, breathe yeah, easy. And not disrupt the other people cool. meditating near you. Yeah. All right. Well, well in the immortal words that of wheel uh, away. No. Dumb and Dumber, Big Gulp, Big gulps, huh? huh? Well, see you later. See you later. Hey.